Okay, uh, the next question um, that I've had lots of times uh, and, and I've done um, done a fair bit of work for guys um, for, that, that have kind of opened with this question. Um, but the next question is, my church has a pipe organ, a real pipe organ, um, but it's broken and we've spent a huge amount of money in maintaining it over the last few years. It's broken again. Um, we need to spend another 20, 30, 40,000 pounds on the thing uh, and quite frankly we don't have the funds. Um, how do I know that if we go down your hot work route that the sound will be anything like the sound of our original pipe organ? Um, so basically I think people are worried that if they make the switch from their pipe organ to hooked work or to a virtual organ that they are going to lose something in the process. Well yes they are, they're going to be going to lose very obviously um, their original pipe organ. We can leave all the parts there uh, and, and we can kind of you know add speakers and everything else in uh, various places distributed throughout the building in the same way that the pipes are. But it's not going to be a pipe organ that you end up with, it's going to be a representation of one. Now, um, there are two things, well three really, I think, uh, that you need to satisfy if you are replacing a pipe organ um, with anything really, even if you're replacing it with another pipe organ, there are three things that that has to satisfy. It has to look right. Um, obviously, if you ripped all the pipes out and you just left big holes everywhere, then you stuck a, stuck a couple of disco speakers where the pipes used to be. That's not really acceptable. Um, it's not going to work, not in my view, anyway. Um, the second thing, and, and obviously the most important thing that you have to satisfy, is that it's going to sound right. Um, you know, if you have a lovely pipe organ and you replace that with some cheap little electronic organ that just sits in a corner obviously that's not going to sound the same as your pipe organ did it can't it, it's just not possible it's a completely different beast and so the third thing that it needs to satisfy is actually it needs to feel right on two different levels the first level is when you're sitting at the console playing it um, if you're used to a nice wooden keyboard with ivory covers uh, that has a certain weight and feel to it and you trade that in for some new plastic keyboard that's not going to feel right uh, and the second thing that has to feel right is the fact that when you hit a 16 foot or a 32 foot pedal note um, you kind of feel the 32 foot more than you hear it really uh, and obviously you need to achieve the same thing with the Hawksworth setup um, or if not then you need to accept that that is something which uh, you will no longer have. So those are the, the things that we, we really need to address. Um, so is it going to be as good? Is it going to sound the same? Um, and so on and so forth. Because it's a big commitment. I mean, if you think about your organ, your pipe organ, yes, all right, it's going to cost you another £20,000 or whatever it might be to get it repaired. And in all honesty, that might only last for another 12 months before something else goes wrong or falls off of it or whatever happens and you have to spend another bunch of money. Um, so yeah, it's attractive obviously to go down the digital route, go for something like Hawk's Work. Um, but in reality, is it as good? What is the difference? Is it going to, can you really replace a pipe organ with this in a building such as a church? Uh, and the answer is yes and no. Um, what I suggest to people, first of all, um, is that because you're going to be replacing your, your pipe or the sound that comes from your pipes with the sound that comes from loudspeakers, what you listen to and what your congregation listens to at the end of a, a conversion is sound coming from loudspeakers. So it's actually very, very easy for you to find out what that's going to sound like. Um, because if you've got, and I'm assuming that we're talking of a, a fairly large church with, say, I don't know, four different places within that building, possibly more, uh, where the pipes are physically situated, it's very easy to actually just go and hire um, a sound setup with four big speakers um, and a couple of amplifiers or however many it, it requires, um, and just to temporarily put those speakers and amplifiers into service in there and then simply feed them with some 
organ music. Now, that kind of possibly sounds a bit silly, but it works because your your uh, Hawksworth computer is simply a computer. It's going to be playing or providing the sounds, if you want, and, and they are true to life. They will sound just like a, a CD, and in fact, better in some, in some circumstances. Um, and if you plug the output of that computer or your phone or whatever, you've got a decent recording um, of uh, some organ music. If you plug that into a big sound system, a couple of big amplifiers, big speakers, like you would be considering buying to go with the new system, actually put them in. That you know, you've, all you've got to do is get, get some nice, strong young lads to haul them around and, and install them temporarily in the places that you think they would go in the church, and just have a listen. Um, there is one pitfall to that approach, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but that will tell you what it's going to sound like. And in some cases, uh, when I've done this, it's actually turned out a nicer sound than the uh, original pipes, or in some cases actually, uh, well one of them was, um, uh, it, was it wasn't actually a working pipe organ, it just looked like one, uh, and that did have speakers. Um, so that was quite easy to do by just putting the you know, higher speakers, bigger speakers, um, next to the original ones that were there. Uh, but that's the way to do it. I mean, it doesn't cost you, what, two or three hundred pound probably to hire this stuff. Um, get all of the people that are, uh, that have a vested interest in, in this, get them all assembled at some point, all at the same time, get this installed and just play around with it, have a listen, see, you know, see how it sounds. And if you like it, then that's the sound that you will get with decent amplifiers and speakers running from your Hawksworth computer. Now, I said there is one case where this can be a bit of a problem, and the case um, that I'm thinking of here is quite often when you hear recorded organ music, um, it's recorded obviously in the place where the organ is, and if there is any uh, acoustics there, um, any echo or anything like that, and usually there is, then what's going to happen is that it will sound fine in your living room because there isn't much um, acoustic echo or anything like that in your living room because of the soft furnishings and the curtains and so on. However, when you put that into um, a church or a large building uh, that doesn't have soft covers everywhere, um, you're going to get echoes uh, and the ambience of that building. And what happens is that that actually adds to the, um, the ambience that's already recorded, if you want, when the recording was made. And what you end up with because of that is quite a muddy kind of, well, it's just not a nice sound really because it's far too much um, echo and, and it doesn't sound good. So you have to be quite careful about the recording that you use to play and listen to uh, when you're doing that test. Um, Ideally, you want something that's recorded in a studio, hasn't got any echo, um, otherwise it's not really a fair test. The other thing that you can do is to actually have um, all of the, once you've got all of the, uh, the speakers and amplifiers temporarily installed in, in your building, is if you get a um, computer and anything really, just a laptop, you put the free edition of Fork to work on it, uh, and you load the free organ, um, you can kind of have a little play around with that. Uh, you don't need to have it plugged into a console, just to hear various notes. Um, you can actually operate the keys with your mouse. So you can hear how well it's going to reproduce your 32 foot pipe, 16 foot pipe and so on. I don't think there's a 32 foot pipe and on the, uh, the organ that comes with it, on the St Anne's Mosley organ. Um, I can't remember to be honest. But uh, there will be, there's, there's a lot of free organs that you can download um, and play with, so uh, there will be something that'll have 32 foot pipe on it that you can play with and listen to. Um, and that gives you a, a bit better idea as well. Um, but again, fair warning, the St Anne's Mosley is, is recorded um, what they call wet. So the samples that they've used to, uh, to make the organ have been recorded with the ambience of, in the St Anne's Church um, where the organ lives. 
So there are some organs that you can get sample sets uh, that are what they call dry, which means that there is no ambience with them. Um, to be honest, driving down the road, I couldn't tell you which ones they are, uh, but if you go onto hawktowork.com, they're onto their website, uh, look at the organs um, that they've got there, and you'll find, uh, if you read through the descriptions, you'll find which ones are recorded dry. So really, I would suggest before you make any big commitments, it's, it's you know, for the sake of two or three hundred quid, hire some decent speakers, some decent amplifiers, um, get them put in, even if we're, we're, you know, the place that you hire them from, get those guys to come and install them for you, um, and sometimes they insist on doing that actually in case you damage them. Um, so from a point of view of physical work, it's, it's not really too bad, uh, and if you get those for a day, um, and then you get all the relevant people in your organisation together for a day, uh, you'd be surprised how much you can find out really, and how much you can play with and, and see how that's going to work. So I think that really helps people to make the decision uh, about whether or not they can replace what they've got with, uh, with a hawk twerk set up or a virtual organ set up of some sort um, and be happy with it. Or whether they're going to put it in and then think, oh my goodness, you know, that, that was a huge mistake, this is awful and, and we wish we'd never done it. Because once you've converted a pipe organ to uh, hawk twerk, there isn't really any going back and it's the same with, with all of the organs, you'll see the, the videos that I've done on, the, uh, on YouTube here. The first thing I do with all of them is remove all of the existing electronics because it's kind of in the way and it's, um, you know, it's redundant, it's not going to be used anymore. And it's the same with a pipe organ, um, assuming that it's not a tracker action, assuming it is electrically controlled, then everything, all the connections are going to be cut going to be um, removed and, and they're now redundant so it's it's a one-way trip really if you make the decision to do it and then afterwards you think well actually you know I, I don't I don't really like that so much can you put it back uh, no you can't um, so you need to be absolutely sure and I think that just hiring the stuff and playing around with it for a day is a good way to be sure so I hope that helps people really um, in, in that situation uh, it's one thing to kind of make or buy or acquire uh, a console and, and a hot truck set up for home use, for practice, uh, etc. But it's, it's quite different when you are doing it for your church, congregation or um, any other kind of venue where you have a public audience. You have to make sure that you're happy with what they're going to be listening to. So. That's my views for what it's worth on that. Um, I hope that's helpful.